All right, good morning, Lee. Thank you so much for joining us here. Um, and for all you guys listening, Lee uh, is, well, I'll let him kind of formally introduce himself later, but he's a video guy. Um, and he's here to talk to us about the topic of video editing. So uh, in this conversation, we'll be talking about, you know, what softwares there are available for editing, depending on what your needs are. Um, you know, we'll talk about where to go to learn better editing skills. Um, we'll talk about how to record your videos in such a way that the editing is gonna be a little bit easier on the back end. And we'll even spend a lot of time talking about, you know, what should be edited and what should not be edited, where that, that, that trade-off comes from and, you know, delaying things and taking more time versus big high quality videos. So um, it's gonna be a great conversation. Um, if you have been, you know, interested in the world of doing more editing with your videos or for some of you doing less editing with your videos, um, this would be a great conversation to listen to and Lee will be a great guy to connect with. So uh, Lee, could you kind of, I guess, formally introduce yourself and let us know what kind of business you're in? Yeah, well, uh, my name is Lee. As he said, uh, business is called Simple Video School. And I teach people how to connect with the audience, make more sales using very simple video from their phone. Uh, background is uh, just been in the marketing world for about 10 years now. Um, I've done a lot of video content for, you know, different funnels, if you're familiar with that term. Um, and just for Facebook ads, YouTube ads, all kinds of different things. So have pretty well versed in, in video. Perfect. And again, thanks so much for coming on. So mm -hmm. uh, first topic here, I'd like to talk about different video editing software that's out there. So mm -hmm. first off, let's talk about really, really simple rudimentary. All you need to do is cut and trim clips, stick them together, put a few transitions in, and maybe throw in some background music, like really, really simple editing tools. Yeah. Um, for people who are not tech savvy, don't have much of a budget, and are, aren't true too picky, what would you recommend for that? Yeah, so I, I think what, there's two, two main programs I use and recommend. Um, and I think it depends on where you're, sh where you're wanting to do that editing. So if you're wanting to do your editing straight from your phone or from maybe like a tablet, uh, you might want to check out an app called InShot. It's I N S H O T and they've got a free version and a paid version of it. And I just use the, the free version. Uh, it's got an ad here or there, but for the most part it does it does a lot of different things. So if you're, if you plan on shooting stuff from, from that um, phone or tablet in shots, probably going to be good for you. Um, if you know that you want to put the video on your computer and do a little bit of editing, uh, what I'd recommend is a program called Filmora nine. Um, and I guess nine is just the most recent release of it. Um, and you can also use, if you have an, a Mac, you can also use iMovie. It's a free software that probably comes on your Apple. Um, but Filmora is one I like a lot because, um, I've used for a long, long time, uh, iMovie and a couple other programs, but Filmora is kind of like a step up. It's, it's not like crazy high end, um, um, uh, super complicated. Um, but it does have a lot of the, the bells and whistles features that some of the other nicer programs have. So again, if you're going to go from stuff that's, if you want to edit on your de desktop itself, then maybe look at something like Filmora 9. If you're going to, if you want to keep it all on your phone, you want to shoot the video and then do it all right there and then post your social content, um, then maybe check out InShot. That's awesome. I've actually um, in the past looked around for a, a good uh, editing app for the mobile device. The problem is if you like Google it or search it in the app store, there's just so many freaking terrible ones that it's yeah, really hard yeah. to sort through. <laughs> to yeah, find a good exactly. one. yeah. And, I, and I like InShot too, because um, I mean, you can do, and we may go into some of that later, what you can do on it. Um, but you can, um, it, it works well for multiple platforms. So if you're wanting like a square, you wanted to crop to a square format, uh, if you're wanting, you know, uh, 16 by nine, I mean, it's just it really uh, a lot of things you can do on that one, but it's pretty cool. And it's, you know, for the most part, it's free. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I should probably download that myself. I don't do much on my phone. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is cool. Um, and the other thing I would add to that is another recommendation for people to check out um, on my desktop for the editing I do. Again, it's, it seems pretty basic, although to be fair, there's probably more can do that I'm not aware of. Um, but the program I use called We Video, and I like We Video quite a bit. So okay. another one worth looking into. Is that W, just one E, like we, you and That's I, it. we? Okay. Yeah, w, E, okay. video. So that one works pretty well for me. Um, all right. So that is the basic type of editing. Do you have any suggestions for people who want to go a little bit more advanced with the edits that they're doing? Any programs that can really support that? Um, I think, I mean, you could still use um, something like a Filmora. Uh, if you're wanting to go way, way, you could go into something like Adobe Premiere. 
Um, but so many of the programs now that you can get, um, you don't really need all those bells and whistles. That's what, you know, people who are, who are working on giant programs and giant projects, I should say, that's what they're using. But I mean, I've seen, I've used iMovie to make videos that have made thousands of dollars for clients. So uh, I think oftentimes we get too stuck in the weeds or worried about what kind of, you know, what kind of car you know, you're going to use when ultimately the same car, multiple different cars can take you from point A to point B. Um, so I would find something that, and most of the programs out there have like a free trial so you can test them out and see what you like. Um, but I would, I would maybe test out a couple and see how intuitive they are. See if you, if they, if they work for you and flow well. And if you do from there, then go with whichever one, um, that, you know, that you like the most. And they, they, they range, I think, uh, Filmora last time I checked, it was like 60 something dollars. Uh, but I've seen them for like 130. I mean, it just kind of really runs the gamut. Um, but, I find that so many of the bells and whistles that all these other programs have, you don't even really use, or most people wouldn't use. And um, if you're not going to be a video editor, you don't want to become one, right? So like if you're a realtor, if you're whatever, you're going to be, whatever your, your actual um, job is, you don't want to spend hours sitting behind a computer and, you know, adding all these little tweaks if that's not your main thing. So, um, I would, I would keep it as simple as possible. Do the things that you feel like you need to do, but don't, don't stress about getting the biggest and the best, the most expensive editing software. Cause you, cause you probably don't need that. On, on that note of complexity, right? There is a serious drawback to having a system that's too powerful because the mm -hmm. more powerful the system, the more buttons and options and things like, I remember there was this one program I tried out, um, last year from what I can tell, it is an amazingly powerful system. Mm -hmm. Like, literally couldn't even just make it do the simplest of things because there were so many buttons, so many options. I couldn't find what I needed. Exactly. It was a total headache. So there's definitely a point where too many features is actually a drawback. Uh, you want yeah. to avoid. Yeah. It's like driving a Lamborghini to go get a gallon of milk. Like, you don't, <laughs> you know, you don't really need to, you don't really need that. So, yeah, so yeah. For sure. Okay, cool. Um, now one thing that a lot of people struggle with is, you know, even if they go buy the editing software out there, they still feel like they're not any good at editing. So where mm -hmm. would you recommend people go um, to learn some of those basic editing skills? So this one will sound kind of funny, but I would recommend YouTube. Um, okay. And the reason, like, the reason I recommend that is, it's the second largest search engine uh, after Google, if you don't know that, and it's owned by Google. But you know, if, you, if your sync is leaking and you need to fix it, you go to YouTube, how to fix a leaking sink. Like that's just what you do. Um, so if you need to know how to uh, uh, crop a video or how to change the color on Filmora 9, type that into YouTube and you're probably going to get a video showing you exactly what you need to do in order to fix that. So um, there are so, there's so much content out there. And whenever I have a quick question like that, I always YouTube it. Um, you're going to find somebody who's probably made a video uh, on it. You're probably going to find multiple videos. So, um, and lots of people have done just kind of, um, you know, 20 minute demo videos, just showing you all the different little, you know, nuances of each program. So that's what I recommend as far as, um, you know, how to, if you're trying to learn, maybe you're trying to learn a new program. That's what I recommend on that. Yeah, it's true. You really can't get about anything through, <laughs> through YouTube. Yeah. I know anytime <laughs> I have any issues with my car, it's the first thing I'm doing. How exactly. do you change out a water pump on a Chrysler? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's the reason we do that. Or I think the reason we do that is because it's, it's visual. Like um, I've had to change the blades on my lawnmower, my riding lawnmower before. Well, what do I do? I opened up, find the brand. You find the video showing you exactly how do you do it. And you hold your phone right there. You, you know, get to whatever part. Okay. I need to count counterclockwise, get that squared away. Okay. Pause. Let me do this. And it just, you know, and, and especially if you're doing some editing on your computer, you open up your one tab here and, and you, your screen and you can open up the program and just do it as you go. So um, it's going to be one of your best uh, trainer, or, you know, I guess it's kind of like a virtual trainer, if you will. Yeah. Um, now let's say you're someone who's 
ridiculously busy and you're looking to pay somebody to do this for you. I imagine there's ways to end up wasting your time, wasting money, causing aggravation and getting burned by, you know, hiring some guy online to do your editing. And I've also heard a lot of people say that it was the best thing they ever did to hire someone else to do their editing. Yeah. Do you have any advice on like, like, you know, how to make sure it's going to be a good experience? Um, to make sure it's going to be a good experience. Um, I think whenever you're doing something like that, you've got to find somebody that you work well with. Um, and I think that that's going to take a little bit of trial and error. Sometimes you nail it the first time. Sometimes you don't. Um, so sometimes when I'll, uh, sometimes I'll shoot certain jobs if I'm doing like, if I need to shoot an actual video job, cause I do that here and there. And uh, if I do that, I will shoot all the content and send that off to an editor. And I know a couple different editors uh, that I like, uh, but also have found some of those people on platforms like Upwork. Um, if you're not familiar with that, um, it's just upwork.com. And you can obviously look at reviews, look at people's um, uh, past work and see what they've done. But I think one of the biggest things is look at how they interact. You know, if you, if you wind up asking them a question, are they prompt? Um, do they have a dismissive tone? Do they sound like they're excited about working on your project? It's just like anything else. Is it somebody you feel like you would get along with? Um, <clears throat> Cause I think we've all had people that we just didn't gel with. I'm doing that behind my, my thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> people that, you know, you just don't, you don't connect with well. And, uh, but I think like with ratings, we're so used to rating systems and whatnot. I think, it's harder to hide behind, you know, if you're not yeah. somebody that, that can get the job done, um, it's harder to hide behind that. So, um, so if you're on LinkedIn, I would maybe number one, ask your LinkedIn network. Um, who do you recommend? Because they've maybe had some good experiences um, or maybe they can tell you who not to, you know, uh, work with, <clears throat> but yeah. maybe start there and then also maybe check out something like Upwork. Um, but I think you kind of hit on the point. If, if you're busy, if you're in, your, in a job doing whatever it is you, you're doing, let somebody else who's great at that do that as opposed to you spending a lot of time and coming up with a mediocre product. Um, you, you could save yourself, you know, if you're of the time is money kind of concept or if you spend four hours having to learn it and then, you know, finally get it done was that four hours better spent somewhere else, you know, selling homes or, or whatever the thing is that you do. Um, you know, so trade that off and figure out what's, what's probably the best fit for you. Is there anything that you can do when you're recording the video to make the editing easier on yourself on the back end? Hmm. Gotcha. So yeah, I would, um, one of the first things I would do is know what you're talking about. Um, you, you don't have to have your video perfect. Lots of people think if, if I start talking and I stumble a little bit, or if I say should instead of could uh, or whatever, I've got to start all over. That's, that's not the case. I uh, just keep going with it. But the way um, there's a quote, a, a guy, Logan Young, I think it was, says um, that competence breeds confidence. And the more you know about whatever your topic is, um, the more you can kind of free flow with it. And I think more of a free flow feel uh, people like that more than either reading a script um, or sounding robotic. So if you can know maybe like three, two, three main little things you want to say in your video, then that will help you to, to just kind of go to the next thing and not be analyzing and, and processing to where you seem distant maybe. So the more of that you can do, the more streamlined your video will feel and you can, um, you can um, not have to read a script, but you can, uh, what's, what's the right word? I guess it's just free flow. You can kind of talk off the top of your head, almost like if you had a friend and they asked you about a topic, you can go over that topic and you don't have to read, you know, anything to tell them about the topic because you know it. One thing that I have uh, noticed just from doing a little bit of editing I do on these videos um, for this mm -hmm. podcast is I've really learned to take a small breath between sentences and in particular, take a small breath between topics because there's nothing worse when you're trying to like cut a section out, but then you realize like one sentence ran pretty much into the next one and there's no clean stop, exactly. stopping place. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, a lot of times I'll force myself to wrap up one thought, take a breath and start the next. That way, if I end up wanting to do some, you know, slicing and slicing, cutting around, it's pretty yeah. easy to do that because I have that breath yeah, versus that's, just that's, running from the next. That's a, that's a great point. Um, and I didn't know if, if folks watching necessarily would do that, but yeah, on the slicing or, or clipping, that's, <clears throat> that's an excellent point because there's been multiple times where you just kind of get free flowing and I'm kind of going and, and I'll just move on to the next thing and I'll just really butcher something. And I like, I need to probably step back and say that a little differently, but there's no clean spot to, to cut that. Um, so, so yeah, that's a great point. Especially, you know, if you can't do it, uh, if you can focus on uh, that one uh, topical break at least, but, yeah. um, but I think also just slowing down a little bit uh, when people are yeah. first getting going on video, they want to, they want to get all the thoughts out of their head and say it and say it and say it. And then it's like, okay, I've got it all out. And then they, you know, then they take their, their breath. Uh, yeah. Just relax. You know, and the other thing I would say is this too is you don't have to say everything in one video. I think oftentimes people are, are wanting to include so much that they wind up just making a, a way, way too long video with so many different topics. And you're like, you could have made that three videos or four videos. So think about what that main uh, point is. Get in there, kind of get out and, uh, and kind of go from there. All right, so um, here's the next thing I want to kind of talk about. What is really worth editing and what isn't, right? So first question here I have for you. There's this, this kind of balancing act, I'd say, between quality content and mm -hmm. quantity of content, right? Because, of course, if you're spending four hours per video, you could probably only do one a week, versus if you spend 15 minutes per video, you can crank out two a day. Yeah. Um, what are your views on that quality versus quantity balance? Um, I think it depends on a couple factors. Like, where are you putting your videos? Um, does does this need to be a more polished video, or can this be? Uh, I always call them informal and formal style of videos. Mm -hmm. So, more formal style of videos. If you're going to put that on the homepage of your website, it's the first interaction you've had with anybody, and you're wanting to seem a little more professional. Maybe you are a high end lawyer. Uh, a doctor, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I've talked with uh, some dentists before and they said <clears throat> they, they want to seem kind of relaxed, but still professional. So uh, it really, it really kind of depends, you know, on, on that. Now, if you are a, um, a podcast host and you are hilarious and that's, that's how you are, you're, you're funny and you, you just kind of real raw, then don't worry as much about what you edit out and just be, just be what you are, be who you are and what you are and think about the brand, the personal brand that you're, they're offering. And that will give you some insight into what you can allow in there. Obviously, like if you're, if you, you're, if you slip up and you're cursing, but you're like a lawyer and you're trying to look more respect, you know, respectable or whatever, you might need to trim that out. Uh, if you go, um, 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 or, or, one thing you might edit out is if you're thinking and you just go blank, it happens to everybody. You're, you're talking about something and you just go blank and you're going and you're just quiet, quiet sitting there. That's something that you're going to want to probably cut out of there. Or if you, if you slip up and you just say something that you're like, Oh, I shouldn't have said it that way. Then that's something you can go ahead and, and trim out too. Uh, I think there is that balance though. Like you're saying of just being, being finding that balance for you and your brand of what how raw you can be and um and i think it just kind of depends on um on a couple different factors but i think it, it depends mainly on the 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 uh, br personal brand and the presentation you want to uh, to show to folks so i don't know if that's helpful but but yeah I think also oh no absolutely um i think also it's a matter of even just like how much time do you have, right? So for a lot of times for me, I'll make videos and I'll really, part of me wants to like redo them or fix them or edit them, but I look mm -hmm. at the clock and realize, shoot, I got five minutes for my next meeting. This is just gonna have to do. So yeah. I think it's a matter of you do as much editing as you can mm -hmm. within the time constraints you're given. And again, yeah. while still producing the volume of content that you want to be. Yeah, and, and going back to what I was saying before, like formal versus informal, <clears throat> if you're doing the formal something, it's something you're probably going to open on your desktop and 
and take a ton of time clipping and trimming and whatever. Um, but if it's something, maybe you are reaching out to somebody you met on LinkedIn and you're making a quick connection, then, then it's okay to say, um, a couple times or kind of laugh at yourself, be a little more real and shoot it once and be done with it. So that's kind of more of the formal style where maybe more of the message is more important than, you know, your background, more important than um, having everything lit a certain way or, or whatever. So it can be a little more raw, a little more um, vulnerable, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, we just talked about uh, these minor mistakes through the lens of, you know, is it really worth fixing? Yes, at the downside, but, you know, is the juice worth, worth the squeeze of fixing it? Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like in some ways or in some contexts, minor mistakes such as, you know, cat hops up in your lap in the middle of a video or you just say, oh, mm -hmm. I'm just a train of thought. Do you think there's a, a positive or a benefit to actually having mistakes in videos ever? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think probably everybody's seen the one video where the, the guy's doing the interview and his kid like walks in the yeah, door yeah. and comes up. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so stuff like that can uh, make you more personable and more real, especially how you respond to it. Uh, had he like stiff armed his kid, you know, or, or something, then, then I would not, then I would probably redo that one. Um, but I think, yeah, just, I, th I think a, a big part of it is how you flow with that. If your cat jumps in and you're like, oh, you know, or they see you getting frazzled by it, or if your cat jumps in, you're like, Hey, everybody here's fluffy, you know, go on fluffy. And you keep moving in in through what you're doing. Then I think it gives a glimpse into who you are. Um, but I saw, I saw some video, it was a Zoom video where a guy, his cat came up and he threw the cat like out of the, out of the frame and everybody got really upset and they were like, yeah, he got in trouble. I, I don't know if he, he may have gotten fired. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but I think, um, you know, if you say a word and you flub the word and you kind of laugh it off and go, oh, I'm, what I meant to say was this, then that just makes you personable and makes you, you kind of fun. Uh, again, versus if you're doing, uh, we, we have where I am, I live in the mountains and there's a, an orchard and they have, they might have like a talking head video and the person's talking about the family history and blah, 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 blah. If they flub something pretty bad, big on that, that would probably, they would probably want to trim that out and, and make that right. But if it's just interesting, quirky, kind of fun things that happen, then just leave it in there. And that's just part of who you are. Well, I've always found that part of what makes videos really connect and resonate with people is, is when while watching your video, people have these, these me too moments, right? Where they see something yeah. about you and your life that they resonate with, for example, exactly. like that happening up on the lap. Um, the other day, and again, this is pretty, this is definitely an informal video. This is just me sending a video email to a prospect who had a quick question for me. Um, mm -hmm. But as I was about to send the video, my daughter wakes up from a nap, my wife's out doing errands. So I got to go grab her and kind of hold her and, she doesn't really want to be sat down. So I end up taking the video with her sitting in my lap and like the top of her head is kind of there in the video <laughs> and I just yeah. go ahead and send it off. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And the person responded back saying, Oh my goodness, your kid is so cute. Believe it or not. I'm literally right now sitting in my computer with my like two year old on my lap as well. <laughs> like there you go. gave us that, that me too moment, right. That moment mm -hmm. of connection. So yeah. Those yeah, minor perfections can definitely help. Yeah. And especially because of like COVID and all that kind of stuff, I think people are, I think the level of professionalism has dropped you know, yeah. significantly because people now see people in their pajamas. They now see people just, you know, the, the, the faults, um, what's the word, the not bravado, uh, the faults I've got it all together for everybody has been stripped away. And, yeah. um, and people can't get their, couldn't get their hair cut and they couldn't do all these things. So every, it's a little more of a level playing field and, uh, and it's kind of all laid out there. So I think people are more conditioned to, okay, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. Um, and then I don't think it ever really needed to be, but I think they're more okay with it not being perfect. Yeah. And I, uh, personally, I love that. And I hope that trend continues. Um, people not letting down that false facade of, I got everything together, right? Mm -hmm. more real. So cool. Yeah. When I was telling a friend about when I was in um, uh, San Diego a few years back at um, uh, it was a um, convention called traffic and conversion, big marketing convention, like 6,000 people. And right up front, people could park their fancy cars. And I don't know why this was the case, but this guy comes parked and he parks his Lambo or whatever it was. 
and um, he gets out and he's got his cool outfit and his cool gelled over hairdo and all this kind of stuff. And it, it was just so funny because like he wanted to park up front so everybody could see him get out of the thing and come in and look important. And I, I was just like, it just seemed sterile and fake and, and whatever. Uh, meanwhile, later on, I, I had talked with a guy, very unassuming, just kind of chill, laid back guy. And, and he told me he makes a hundred thousand dollars a month selling salt shakers and fuzzy cat uh, tunnels. And I'm just sitting there going, all right, this, this is the guy I want to talk with right here. Not, you know, uh, the guy that probably rented the Lambo so that he could, uh, you know, impress his, uh, impress a bunch of people that he didn't know. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really. All right. Um, what edits have you found people can get the, the best ROI on, right? Meaning like the most improvement to the value of the video, the most improvement to quality of the video with the least amount of time. And then what edits would you suggest people stay away from? Because they'll end up sinking hours into it and the final product will be just marginally better than the original product. Um, I'd say probably one of the most important ones is if you really flub something up um, and you need to take that out, you know, if you go blank, um, if, uh, and, and definitely at the very beginning and the very end of your video, if you're doing this whole kind of thing, let's say you have your camera sitting there and, and you don't want people to see this. Right. And you yep. walk by and you're like, blah, 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 blah. And then they're like, you know, you're pressing that, you know, start and, and end button. Um, <clears throat> I, I typically trim those. The good thing about that is most programs, uh, I have an iPhone. So um, if you have an iPhone, I'm sure, sure it's the same thing on uh, Android is they have it where you can just trim. You grab the end of the video and pull it in yeah. and grab the beginning of the video and pull it in. You just get rid of that little section. Uh, so that's one, I mean, to me, that's one of the most important things because it covers the formal stuff and the informal stuff. Uh -huh. um, but I, I would also, I guess, just say the, the major flubs, major mess ups, major um, forget, you know, where, where you go blank and you have to regather your thoughts, regroup. Um, I think some of the things that aren't as important, definitely for informal video, maybe more formal, this is more important, but like adding music, um, oftentimes you just really don't need it for, especially for informal stuff. Like if you're making a connection, your request, or you're uh, just doing a quick heads up video, you don't need music for that because it's, you're, you're putting lipstick on a pig. Like um, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it is what it is. It's raw. And to, for you to be like, Hey, I'm sitting here in my basement, want to reach out and say, Hey, and there's like doo, 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 music behind you. It's just kind of like, what, what are they? Somebody got happy with the new editing software. Um, so more, that's going to be more for your formal stuff. Um, and I would probably also say like putting a bunch of text, uh, that's going to be more for your formal, like your transitions or cool graphics or whatnot. That's going to be more for formal stuff. So again, it goes back to whatever you're using, the intended use is of the video. Uh, one other thing I would say is if you're going to be doing stuff on YouTube, um, because some people, I guess, are, are maybe doing their YouTube channel or whatnot, you can get uh, the expectation is to have a little more towards the formal, a little more put together, a little more clean style video. Um, and I've seen that be the pattern for a while now. Now I have seen some people who are running ads and their ads are a little more raw. So uh, find out what everybody else is doing and kind of do the opposite uh, to some degree, okay. I guess. But, but, um, but for the most part, your easiest things are going to be just um, taking out, you know, trimming front and back and taking out your big mistakes for your informal content. Now, here's the question I saw I have for myself. Um, you know, when, when you're cutting out pieces or replacing pieces and doing some of that splicing, is it really important to like try really, really hard to hide the fact that it's like a cut or is it okay to just cut and allow the fact that your body suddenly moves a little bit? Yeah, it's, that's a personal preference. I, I don't mind at all to be like, it's a little weird to be like, you're like this and all of a sudden you're like, boop, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a little weird. So, um, so if you can minimize that, but like, if I'm talking like this and blah, 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 and I, I'll, I'll clip it and cause I'll, I'll be moving here. So like, beep, or whatever, that's not really that big of a deal because I think, I think oftentimes when people watch videos, or at least I do, I look at the person's eyes and their face when they're talking. Like, it's almost like I'm having that eye contact with them. Um, so I, I don't think, uh, Years back, I saw people would have a little transition, a little black, a little, sorry, my timer went off for some reason. Um, 
people would go like a little bit of um, like a little black or a little white mm-hmm. to the next thing or whatever. I've just not seen that being the case um, for a while. And it's not something I do. So I don't think it's needed. So. All right. Um, I would say final question for you, Ben. Um, if you're working with somebody who is really, really editing dependent, like they're not very comfortable on camera. They feel like they have to edit out every single mistake. And it means that every single you know video ends up taking 12 hours to get perfect. Any particular advice you'd give this person to kind of help them? Um, stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the thing going around my, uh, my circle of friends right now is the Bob Newhart skit uh, from Mad TV where he says, stop it. Um, and uh, he's, he's being a psychiatrist. I don't know if you've seen that. He's being a psychiatrist. Look it up if you haven't. It's funny. Um, again, I would just go back to what, what is your job? Like what, what do you love doing and work in your zone of genius? Um, if you're spending 12 hours or four hours or what, however many hours editing a video, then you don't know how to do it properly, I would say, because, um, because a, a professional can get that done in a quarter of the time. Um, they're going to do a much better job and they're going to present you in a, in a better light. So, uh, so, and, and one other thing too is maybe, maybe budget is the limitation. Maybe you, you know, budgets, you just don't have a lot of money. Consider uh, like a high school or college uh, kid who needs some money, but who's interested in video editing. Um, I remember recently that I have a, um, a friend of the family. He's got a, a, a fi- it's a 15 year old uh, young guy and he loves videos and editing and all that kind of stuff. He's does stuff on YouTube and it's, you know, <clears throat> you can pay them not very much money because they're a younger person uh, and they don't have to go work at a grocery store, you know, whatever it is. And they can do something they like and they can do a much better job than you probably can too. So, um, so yeah, focus on your zone of genius, outsource the things that are not. And, um, you know, there, there's, if, if people have not outsourced in that way, there's, it's a great feeling to know that you've got a project being worked on and it's going to come out better than what you could do. And you're able to do your, do something that you need to be focusing on. You're multiplying and duplicating yourself. And the more of that you can do, the, the better, you know, things are going to go for you. Well, thanks a ton for your time, Lee. I do know that, you know, editing is a huge topic for people getting started with video. For a lot of people, it's a huge crutch, but of course there is a legitimate place for it. Like I said, even on this show, I do some editing. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you coming on to, uh, to talk about this. Um, now, for people listening, I can tell you Lee is a, is a brilliant guy and a wonderful resource with all things video related. And again, in particular, he's very good at the simple video aspect of things. So uh, Lee, what are great ways for people to get in contact with you or what are some of the programs and offerings that you have that people can check out? Yeah, you can go, uh, you can see my website is simplevideoschool.com. It's pretty simple. Um, I've got a free six part video series uh, called six simple tips. And that's just shows you how to make your phone videos look better. So if you're struggling with that, maybe not used to, to doing that, uh, S I X simple tips.com. And then also have a, a course, uh, called phone video made simple. And it goes into messaging and how to shoot and a lot of other things. You can see that if you go to some, um, uh, simple video school, you can see the, the video course there. So those are probably three, three ways to, to get a little help. Cool. Well, thanks so much for your time today. All right, man. Thank you for having me.